they're going to do well in this competition. Uh, as far as bringing products to market um, and taking it steps further than this competition, uh, it's you know I, I'd love for ten of the thirty teams to start working on this. Um, do I think that's going to happen? No, not with everything that they have going on. But I do think there are four to six different products this year that could really take, you know, these teams can take it to the next level. Okay. Well, I guess time will tell. And all the hard work and the dedication that the students are putting in and you and, and the mentors and everybody involved to make this happen, sponsors actually putting some uh, resources into the competition. So when you're, when you're raising money, Besides yeah. the the final prize, what what are you what are you doing with the sponsorship money? What what is the expenses within the competition that are needed? Okay, so we have you know, I, I turned it in. I turned the competition into a little bit of a networking event too. So basically, the competition is going to take place um, on an afternoon in April, where the kids will come in and do their preliminary competition in front of judges. The next morning, we all reconvene. Um, at Hills East in their auditorium, and we will go over who made it to the finals. At that time, those 10 teams out of the 35 that get chosen will go into another room and prepare for their final competition. Everyone else goes into the library for a networking breakfast. We have it fully catered, um, so we do need sponsorship money for that breakfast. We have a couple companies. One company donates the plaques. We have a company that uh, pays for all the T-shirts for the kids. Uh, so the kids are walking away if they participate with a certificate as well as a T-shirt. Um, between that and prize money, it's um, you know, we do need to raise a couple thousand dollars to get this off the ground. Okay. Well, it seems like you're doing it, and there's plenty of companies that, that want to be a part of it because – Obviously, not only to help the kids, but the exposure that this competition is really built up in the in the community. And I'm sure the people listening out there that are teachers or involved in their school districts, that they can also have some kind of initiative like this if they don't already. Yeah, basically it's gone from uh, just talking one-on-one -on -one with someone to almost where we're going to possibly invite other schools next year, maybe turn this into a Pacific County or Long Island competition in the future. Super. So the kids end up working on their ideas, developing, going through their pitches and so forth, and now comes pitch day. So yep. what, did, what do you do to prepare for pitch day? You have... Uh, these preliminary judges, you have the students that have to put on their presentation. Uh, I guess they're getting scored some way. Yep. So, so basically, here's what happens. Uh, March 25th this year, we have our final meeting with their mentors. Uh, they go over any changes that need to be made. Um, oh, about two weeks later, they are handing me in their final presentation. Um, in between that two-week period, they, or actually, it's a three-week period. Uh, the kids will then go to at least two practice sessions, um, having a couple at each high school, and the kids have to go to two of them. There will be business partners there. They will listen to their preliminary pitches uh, and give them some constructive criticism, and hopefully the kids practice it enough that it's flawless on that competition date. Okay, so here comes competition day. Tell us what, what's set up and what to expect from the students. So the kids get you know, assigned a, a room and a time. Uh, so they'll have the, the whole, each session will take about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, we usually do about four to five minutes for their pitch. Uh, some students will present it based on a PowerPoint or a Prezi or in Keynote. Some kids will use index cards. Some kids will be showing off their prototype product. Uh, and some kids will have it memorized where the, you know, they're really just talking to the judges, and that's what we really want. Um, so basically, on the, during the preliminaries, during their pitch, they will talk about anything that they need to do to sell their product. Then there will be a question and answer session for about four to five minutes. Uh, and hopefully, the, at that point, they'll be, able, they'll be able to answer any questions that the judges may uh, propose to them. 
Okay, and while they're giving their presentation and they're answering questions, the judges are giving them a certain amount of points, and the point system is going to figure out who the finalists are going to be. Yeah, so basically we have we came up with a grading rubric last year, and we've enhanced it this year. Um, we are giving you know 30 points to their marketing strategy, and that's going to be their target market, and hopefully it's defined well. Uh, identifying the competition, demonstrating any research, the costs, selling price, profit margin, how they're advertising, where, how, um, how they're using social media to get their product out there. That's worth 30 points. Their actual idea and concept um, is worth 40 points because that's really what this is about, really their idea. And uh, hopefully they can you know, clearly demonstrate um, what the product is, its usefulness, uh, its functionality, uh, what problems it solves, how it works, why it's going to work, uh, its uniqueness. And then we have 30% is really their pitch. And that's, is it attention getting? You know, did, did, did they hook the judges? Did they hook the audience? Uh, hopefully they gave detailing the compelling features of the product successfully. Did they show proper planning, were all the members involved. I know sometimes you have one guy that's going to take over the whole presentation and the other two are left out in the dust. And, and you don't want that. You want everyone to be equally involved. Uh, and that live sales pitches 30 points. So there we have our 100 points. And the judges will grade the, each team on that 100-point scale. And basically we'll come up with uh, our top 10 teams from there. And then once you have the top 10 teams, what happens then? So that's, that happens on the first afternoon. The okay. second afternoon, everyone's there. So we invited uh, all the members to our business partnership. Uh, the students are inviting their parents. Uh, we've invited Newsday and News 12 to come, our local media outlets. Uh, we have Congresswoman Susan Berlin speaking. We, uh, so we have a couple of guest speakers. We bring the kids in 8 o'clock in the morning. We introduce every single team. Uh, we get them all up onto the podium. Uh, we have a you know keynote speaker, which uh, has yet to be determined, but it might be someone that uh, everyone knows, <laughs> which is a good thing. Great. I can't reveal that on here though. <laughs> uh, and then after we after that, we really we go over our top ten finalists, and at that point, everyone else goes into these this networking breakfast where they could speak to anyone that's there. Uh, and then the ten, the 10 finalists, those teams will go into a separate classrooms and prepare for the final competition after breakfast. Okay. It's, uh, it's, getting, it's getting hot. This competition's <laughs> getting heavy right now. So once they this – uh, this is their day. So they're going up on the stage. They're taking turns. They're mm -hmm. putting on their presentation probably even bigger and better than what got them into the position in the first place. They know you that know? these are the top 10 now. So uh, what happens on that day? Well, basically, you know, their presentation stays about the same four to five minutes. Uh, we have set up five final judges, and these are all gentlemen and, and ladies that have a lot of experience in this area, concept development, uh, taking products to market. Um, Brian, you, I'm hoping that you would be one of our final judges. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Of course, I'd love to. <laughs> Uh, and then we, we, we do have a couple of gentlemen that have uh, had a wealth of experience, a lifetime of experience doing this. Um, the question and answer period, that's the difference. They, mm -hmm. uh, basically, the kids are asked, you know, instead of five questions, they're asked 10, 12 questions. And, you know, the nerves do set in. You're in front of an auditorium, and last year there was probably about 250 people there. This year I'm expecting probably close to double that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's, it's really the kids that are prepared and are confident about this will shine. So they're getting asked questions. So they're putting their presentation on. They're getting asked questions about how much their product costs, how much is it going to cost to launch their business, what's mm -hmm. the competition, what's making you different, how do you, is it go as far as almost revenue and profit margin and, and how deep does it get? This is a tremendous you know lesson for these kids to learn. Yeah, you know what, last year I wanted to keep the playing field a little more even, so, and it was the first year of the competition, so we kind of omitted the financial aspect. 
which looking back, it was great as far as a marketing competition, but really, we really wanted to make this a little more in-depth this year, so we have added that financial piece, and, and, and not so detailed, but really how much it's going to cost to make, cost to produce, and how much they're going to really sell it for retail and wholesale. Uh, are we going to get into how much the, their company is going to be worth and <laughs> at what percent the uh, quote-unquote sharks want to invest in? No. But they will, will have a basic financial idea of how much you know, the costs are. How are they going to do that, Doug? Is, is it – did you get um, – because during the process of the invention process or even the business okay. process, there's the research and development. And if you're coming up with an idea, you have – a patent search, which, you know, again, you're kind of like filtering out how much, uh, you know, may be different or may not be different. I don't know if you're yeah. doing a full opinion of whether it's a patentable item or not, product or not. Then you also have the 3D drawings and you have uh, yeah. you know, CAD drawings. You have potentially making prototypes and, and going to a manufacturer to find out how much tooling costs and the manufacturing costs and how much a patent costs to protect it? Is it going that deep, or are you kind of keeping it uh, uh, general? I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to go that deep because then I lose some of the kids. Okay. Uh, remember, you're talking with you know some some of these teens are ninth graders that are fourteen. You know, these kids are fourteen years old still. So to you know to blow their hair back with some of that uh, some of that info will uh, yeah I don't know if they'll continue with the competition. I want to keep all these students involved. Uh, okay. So we we do go about. Finding out if this product's on the market, uh, they, that's part of their research and development. And then in meeting with their mentors, their mentors are helping them in this process as well. Very good. So how do they find out, like, let's say one of the questions is, how much is your product going to cost to produce? How would, how would one of your students answer that? I, I think they're looking at basically some products that are similar uh, in nature. Um, they're going over, you know, what they've seen on the market as to, you know, I, I really think they're comparing it to other products that are out there. Uh, in speaking with a lot of the kids, they say, well, this, this you know, if they have an idea, idea A, you know, mo product B is on the market, does something similar but really doesn't hit what their concept is, mm -hmm. they'll kind of go off of that price. Okay. And then they'll take the price of what it would be, let's say, retail, and then they'll maybe cut it in half uh, and, and then a little bit less and just kind of figure out, or maybe their mentors will help them with how yeah, much. I think a lot, of it, right? a lot of it has to do with the mentors helping. Yeah. Um, you know, again, out of 35 teams here, you have over 100 kids. You know, I'm going to say about 80% of them are in business classes right now. And we are teaching certain classes such as financial literacy, um, business ownership, and marketing. And we do hit on a lot of these topics within those classes. So they do have a basic knowledge, a basic high school knowledge of this stuff. And hopefully they're taking that knowledge and you know, translating it into what they think these costs should be. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. So you have the top 10, and now you cut it down to number one. What happens, yeah. what makes that number one so unique that they won the competition or they're going to win the competition uh, yeah. based on last year, and what's in it for them? I think, I think last year was great. I think we had, a, we had a, a lot of mediocre products out there, but we did have five or six great, great ideas. And uh, the teams that placed, the, we had uh, one through five we placed. You know, basically, uh, first, second, and third did an outstanding job. One of them, one of them was a, uh, an app for a, it was called Track the Truck. Uh, the kids wanted to track where the neighborhood ice cream, ice cream trucks were. <laughs> and uh, they really sold it well. And uh, there was, a, you know, another one, had a sort of like a hairbrush that had a couple different facets to this where it would be able to store certain hairsprays and gels and whatnot. Uh, they had a prototype, but uh, the winning team, they did an outstanding job of selling the product. They had personality on the stage, and I think that was, that was the key. They had a great concept. Um, it was a, a toothpaste that kept you awake. I don't want to get into 
all, all of that, but they sold it. They were on stage, and they had great personality, and they really 